Welcome, I'm Tony Bernardo, faculty chairman at the UCLA Anderson School of Management. At UCLA Anderson, we foster a culture of innovation and creativity that allows us to rank among the top management schools in the world in the creation of intellectual capital. Not only do our world-renowned faculty bring their own ideas into the classroom, but they also critically evaluate new ideas and developments in management from around the world. Now, please meet some of our distinguished faculty. Uh, uh, one of the things that I have been very interested in the last few uh, years is how to value research and development investments. How can a pharmaceutical company decide when is the right moment to invest hundreds of millions in dollars in develop a new uh, drug? Uh, that's a very difficult investment problem because there are a lot of uncertainties. You don't know how long it will take to develop the drug. The average is about 10 years. You don't know how much money you're going to spend in developing. It's about a, uh, the average is about $1 billion for developing one successful new drug. And even when you finish all this process, you have uncertainty about the market for that drug, whether it will be very general or, or some specific case. I've recently been interested in studying the differences in national brand performance across regional U.S. markets. Surprisingly, it turns out that those brands actually have very different market shares as well as different prices across those markets. And my research tries to explain those differences using order of entry and early marketing strategy as some of the variables that we look at, um, especially during the time when those industries were in fact young or during the time when those industries were significantly restaged or rejuvenated. One of the projects that I'm working on now focuses on the interaction of the consumer with the marketer at the point of sales. And it's sort of interesting to me that marketers really fundamentally believe that you should take the consumer's point of view. And yet, as consumer researchers, we often do just the opposite. Instead, we think of what the marketer would like to say and then simply try to test strategies to make that communication more persuasive. So in this research instead, I'm taking the assumption that when consumers enter a sales interaction or when they go to look for or search for products, that there are certain things they would like to see out of this interaction. And the goal of my research is to do a better job of understanding what it is that they would like to have. Recently, a lot of my research has been focused on comparisons between Japan and the United States. Um, a lot of people, when they first heard that I was doing this research on Japan, which I started about five years ago, said, well, Japan's a has-been, and people were interested in Japan in the 1980s, but they're not interested in Japan today. But as we've seen recently, Japan's economy has recovered during the last three years, and there's a tremendous amount of interest in understanding what that means. Uh, does it mean that Japanese companies have become more like American companies? What are the implications of economic recovery in Japan? Um, these are the kinds of questions that, that I've been studying. My most recent research on um, brand extension evaluations by children is showing that kids are affected by surface cues such as the brand name and even, even if there's nothing meaningful in the name itself. So our research there showed that children evaluated brand extensions with rhyming names better than brand extensions that were uh, based on more deep cues like uh, perceived similarity, the way that adults make extension evaluations. So at the end of that paper, we were suggesting that uh, people who are involved with uh, setting guidelines for marketing to children should be aware that children are very susceptible to brand name effects that may not have any uh, extra advantages other than a cute brand name itself. I've been doing research on how status orders evolve in small groups. Most of the research up until now looks at uh, how status orders emerge in the first place, and I'm looking at them over time and how they evolve and change. Um, I, most of my research is on negotiation and conflict in groups and organization, and so I'm looking at uh, instances where people are having conflicts and negotiations over their status, not over just transactions or specific decisions. So um, the traditional way that we think about uh, strategic management is we think about markets. We think about pricing strategy, capacity strategy, and various other aspects of market strategy. But in fact, there's a way to think about strategy which is different, and that is to think about other venues in which you can gain competitive advantage. And those venues are 
in places like political markets, in places like the media, in places like dealing with activism, in places like corporate social responsibility. And what my research does is it analyzes how firms gain competitive advantage beyond markets in these other arenas. And what it does is it tries to integrate the traditional elements of market strategy with these non-market elements in order to really take the firm to a different level of competitive advantage. I hope you enjoyed your glimpse into the research produced by some of our distinguished faculty members. Our thought leadership influences academia, policymaking, and the global business community. UCLA Anderson students not only benefit from learning state-of-the-art concepts, but they also develop new ways of reasoning that will help them achieve long-term success. Thank you for joining us.